grace of Christ, brethren, we will continue our lesson from the New Testament. We'll read from the second epistle of Paul to Timothy. From chapter 4 and verse 5. Second Timothy chapter 4 and verse 5. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, and have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, Christians for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychicus I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his works. You also must be aware of, of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense no one stood with me, but all forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me, and that all the Gentiles must hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion, and the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet Prisca and Aquila and the household of Onesiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus seek. Do your utmost to come before winter. Eubulus greets you as well as Pudens, Linus, Claudia and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. Hallelujah. This uh, episode, which was um, written around 68 AD, it's the last episode that the Apostle Paul sent. And it considered that a small amount of time after this epistle was sent, um, he was killed by being beheaded. And it said that if he had time, he would have probably written another epistle. So this last epistle was written to this young man whom he loved a lot and whom he considered his child. And the most important thing for the Apostle Paul, for Timothy, is that he continued the work of God. And he continued the work of God with essential characteristics which put him in the, um, in the place of the faithful servants of the Lord. That is, he to rightly divide the Word of God, um, to have faith in the Word of God, and uh, to be a minister that is not put to shame, a man that is approved to God. And the last words of the Apostle Paul to Timothy were, and this is um, important to hear it and for us to read it, because it's the most important thing that the Apostle Paul has written to Timothy since these are his last words. But you be diligent in everything. Be uh, sorry. Be watchful in all things, because uh, previously it said that the time will come that people will not suffer the law, uh, the sound doctrine, but on the contrary, they will heap up themselves teachers to teach them the things that they uh, delight to plea to to listen to, and so 
they will turn themselves away from the truth and their hearing and they will turn into fables. So in this kind of an environment, an environment of the latter days, um, with a prophetic word that comes from God, the commandment of God and the exhortation of the Apostle Paul is that you be watchful in all things. Do not fall asleep, do not act with superficiality, do not be indifferent, but in all things be diligent. Very attentively, you should pay attention to uh, what is happening in your personal life, then in your family life, in your church life as well, and last, around your environment. The Christian, my dear brethren, he is a watchman, he is light, and he is also the man who has the understanding of the truth. And this is a gift from God. And it's also the mission um, given by God. Because God gave us a mission and a work to each one of us. So according to the mission and each one's work, every one of us, the first thing that he has to do in his personal Christian life is to be watchful in everything and uh, everywhere. He has to be... Um, watchful and diligent in everything because the details make up the whole thing and the second thing is suffer long the work of God is not just having a good time Not something that people of God appreciate, and much more it's not glory before man. If the work of God, which the servant and the maid servant do the latter days, does not have long suffering but uh, just a, a good time, then something's not going well. For that reason, the Apostle Paul says to Timothy, suffer long, that is, do not get distance, do not get away, do not escape from long suffering, do not please yourself to uh, and have a good time and to entertain yourself. That's not your mission, that's not your work. Your mission and your work is to suffer long. And how do we suffer? It's by present your bodies a living sacrifice that is uh, tied up, that is alive, that is holy, that is pleasing to God, and this is your reasonable worship. So a man, the servant of God, and the maid servant of God, they might present their body a living sacrifice that is tied up in the will of God, with holiness, with cleanness, and and also man can present his body, the servant of the maid servant, um, also in um, enjoying themselves and and delighting in themselves, and and the result will not be um, desirable because you will seek and you will not receive because you're seeking just for your own pleasures. So a Christian who does not enjoy the grace, the mercy, and the peace of God uh, because he cares to just have a good time in this life um, rather than to suffer. And this, my dear brethren, it's not just a commandment that God gave to Paul, uh, to Timothy. Uh, sorry, to Paul, but it's a commandment that Paul transferred to Timothy. And it's a commandment that Timothy has transferred to each one of us through the Word of God. When a Christian learns how to have a good time and he seeks um, entertainment and enjoyment, then he loses the presence of God and to say it even more specific, he loses the grace, the mercy and the peace of God. He loses the kingdom of God. Suffer long. This is a commandment of the latter days. And even more work what God has entrusted to you. The Christian has learned to work. What? What's my work? 
while the lazy man found some excuses what's my work i do not know i do whatever i can i do whatever i want that man is lazy a lazy man and this starts by being lazy in hearing so he says will we hear the same things will we always eat manna will we always go to the church we we'll do the same things and in the end he becomes a lazy person in the work of god he does nothing he does not work and he does whatever pleases his flesh not whatever pleases god and what does please his flesh and his heart and his reasoning is what is it that he uh, delights in that's what he does he doesn't do what will bring him in suffering and into um, wearisome and he forgets that he who works in the Lord he will receive his reward according to his labor These are amazing, these last commandments, which I would dare say we should have them written so that we may um, read them daily at home. I'm, tell I'm saying them again. Be v uh, watchful in all things. Your eyes and your senses should be trained to discern what is good and bad to be able to to separate what is good from what is vile so suffer long not have a good time labor you should present your body a sacrifice in the ministry of Christ so that God may transform you to a steward of the mysteries of God that's the first thing and the second thing is and to put you in the ministry of your brethren so that you may enjoy and God may transform you to a steward of the multiple grace of God otherwise otherwise you will be like an empty team teen you will come and go the same way and you'll have no fruition neither personal nor a family nor a church nor a blessing in your life nothing and if in fact you add on that the lack of love then you will be like a sounding a brass even if you are filled with the Holy Spirit may God help us brethren may God help us so be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, and do the work that God has entrusted you. And what's the work that God has entrusted me? Is whatever you can do. Because whatever you can do, I cannot do it myself. Since what I can do, you cannot do it. And this is evident in the church and at home as well. Because my wife Anna can do a different work and I might help her if... I even do that and different is the work that I do and my uh, wife Anna supports me and the children um, as well so everyone has his own works and each one knows that God has entrusted to them and and we do not get lazy but everyone works diligently which is something that God wants because whoever um, w does the work of God carelessly then the Word of God says that he is accursed so can you you can now understand what kind of um, years we are live and last make your ministry complete above all take care of the ministry that God has entrusted you and what's that ministry that God has trusted you do not do it one day and the next day stop it now what is terrible is that when you start something you work for 10 20 days one month and then you stop and then you start a different thing and I do it the same way and eventually you do nothing then the work that God has trusted you your ministry you know it very well 
because you see your fruition. We shouldn't forget that, that the good tree you can tell uh, by good fruit because a good tree cannot bear bad fruit. Likewise, a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. May the fear of God rule our life and may we tremble in the Word of God. The Word of God is not just a, a small a book which we read, in a, read it whenever we have some time by obligation uh, every day three pages. These are nonsense. We eat the Word of God, that is, we study it, and then our progress becomes evident. Because it's not of Him who wills or of Him who runs the progress in our personal and family life, but it's of Him who shows mercy by God. And what we need is the mercy of God, that God may be merciful to us. And when He sees our zeal, by trembling before the Word of God be, and doing the work of God, then God is. And He reveals Himself compassionate, merciful, long-suffering, true, changing His mind from doing evil. He is a God who is truly holy, almighty, and all-wise. Now, after Paul finished with Timothy, he brings before he, take, he brings before his uh, life before the powers in heaven on earth and under the earth by saying that I am at the end. I'm um, I'm becoming like a pouring offering of any kind of offering. When they sacrificed and they offered, they used to pour a cup of um, wine as a completion of the sacrifice for the glory of God. And he considered himself and he, his death now the last sign of the sacrifice that presented his body as a living sacrifice before God. I'm coming to an end and um, the pouring offering of the sacrifice will be my blood which will be shed since I will be killed. I am um, I'm already being poured out as a drink offering and the time and we should uh, stay on that it says that the time of my not of my departure but of analysis, which m it means the l liberation, the cutting off um, of all that bound them. When the ox used to come out from their bonds, they used to call that liberation of the oxes. I um, finished my work when the sheep would finish their work and they would go out to the sea there was was called an analysis of their work you are done with your work this is not um, a dismissal but this is a, a temporary or permanent liberation that's what the Apostle Paul considers his death. And why is he saying that? It's because he has testified that being free are free from everything, Christ has delivered me from all. Now I have enslaved myself to everyone. That is, I have put myself under the yoke with the Lord. And what do I expect is my time of liberation which does not depend on me but it depends on the Lord this word is amazing my dear brethren please look at it 
Today, this word an analysis, we use it um, analysis of a problem, of events. But the Apostle Paul considers death a liberation. Besides, he says that in his epistle to the Philippians. But to live in the flesh, this is for the fruition of my work. And I do not know what to choose because I'm grieved. Because on the one hand, I have the desire to departure, to depart and to be with Christ because it's much better. But to continue in this flesh, it's not better, but it's much more necessary. And it's not necessary for me, but for those whom I minister. What a nice spirit Paul has. He has the spirit of a servant. He knows that it's much better uh, for the time of his departure to come and for his liberation and to go and meet his Lord and to enjoy his face continually and to be free. But what he cares for is what is good for whom he is working for. And for that reason, the Apostle Paul, by um, having revelation by God, he said that I will not uh, lose my boasting. And what's that? Is it to preach the gospel? No, this is my obligation. Word to me if I don't preach. But I should preach um, the gospel without expense, though the Lord said that the ministers should leave off the gospel. But the Apostle Paul has understood who is the boss. Of course, the commandment is that the servants and the ministers to leave off the gospel, but what the Apostle Paul understood and he preaches to us is how. From whom should I receive a reward? From whom should I be fed and depend on? Is it from him who sends me? Or is it from those uh, to whom he sends me? I have to choose. The Lord sends me to some people. Do I expect a reward from them so that I may live of the gospel? Or is it to receive my reward from him who sent me. And he trusts that he is much better, much more effective. Uh, it gets no obstacle along the way to depend um, to depend on him who sends him and not from those people to whom he sends him and he is the only one who had this revelation and this boldness to say it he says that if I would preach uh, if I would decide to preach with my own initiative then it would have been excused to ask for a word but I never asked a thought or demanded to preach the gospel so someone has called me, he gave me um, a ministry and by giving me the ministry of the preaching of the gospel I have trust myself to him who has given me a ministry so that I may do nothing by my own will but with, with his own initiative so that he may take care of everything in my life. My dear brethren, it's so nice your life to depend on Christ and um, and not from any other man. And this uh, has an absolute blessing in it. Whoever hopes in the Lord and only in the Lord, he is blessed. Whoever puts by the Lord and his hope in the Lord and hope in other things as well, if he casts out his hope out from the Lord, then he will be accursed. And so, the Apostle Paul, who has understood that his life 
is in the ministry of the Lord bound in the Spirit please hear this it's the Word of God he's bound in the Spirit to go where he does not want to go to do the things that he um, never thought he would she should do and to walk where he doesn't want to walk he is bound in the spirit and it's very important that us at some point may God help us to be able to ask this from God Lord please give me this spirit so that I may be able to say that I'm bound in the spirit and that I do the will your will because you have enslaved me with bondage of freedom if you didn't have this understanding then the obstacle could have never loved that much the time of his uh, liberation from this bonds from the slavery from being uh, bound in the spirit but there are also two more things which increase his boldness before God uh, three more things I have fought the good fight and he himself says and I like it a lot that even if someone fights he will not receive the crown unless he fights lawfully the fight of the obstacle is a constant running not uh, aiming to get quickly to the end but to make it to the end this is a constant fight which he has uh, to perform it lawfully that is according to the will of God and in his mind he should keep that he will be crowned he runs and he fights a good fight lawfully because he knows that in the end he will be crowned he's not fighting so that he will be glorified here here he says we will consider it as um, nothing he is striving um, and you understand do you understand why I'm saying that because many times it has come up to me and I'm sorry that I'm saying that I'm saying that uh, confessing this to you many times come up within me a self-satisfaction when we consider ourselves that we uh, do the work of God of the Lord but the obstacle doesn't have that the obstacle knows that uh, he is bound in the spirit and what satisfies him is that the time of his liberation will come so that he may be crowned with the crown of righteousness down here he is waiting um, for an, no kind of uh, reward but here where he's expecting is for suffering again in his episode to the Philippians he says walk worthily um, of the gospel as I for the obstacle stand in one spirit and strive together with one accord and with one goal and that is the faith of the gospel so he has fought lawfully um, his fight and he didn't uh, go astray from his personal path he didn't choose a path in his fight but he knew that his fight is appointed by God and that the path that he had to run in is appointed by God it's amazing the revelation that the Apostle Paul has that he does not think that it pleases him or what he thinks 
And for that reason, he has boldness to say that only those who are led by the Holy Spirit, they are truly children of God. And what does this mean that I'm led? It means that I am in a row. And you have a boss who tells you, one, two, one, two, and then stop. And rest. And then stand again. Rest and then get up again and run. And his mind. We have learned this while in the army and the mind of the man. Either he's a good soldier or not, how much more when he's a good soldier. His eye is alert in the voice of him who gives him the commandment. And we receive this commandment by God the Father through Jesus Christ and by the Holy Spirit. But it is necessary that you may be in this row and you must be your your place and your attention as was read be watchful in all things you should be attentive to the voice of the Holy Spirit I remember it was a foreigner who came in uh, served in the army and he used to say and the trainer used to say stand but that man didn't speak Greek well so he, he couldn't follow the orders he couldn't understand and then after the sun came down he went down from a tree and and the trainer told him what are you doing there he said here is a shadow but over there there's the sun burning now that kind of man he's the one who who is trying to have a good time of course he didn't know what to do but we know amen brethren we know so m my path I have finished it by being led always by the Holy Spirit and last I have preserved my faith the Apostle Judah says brethren I put every effort to write you about the salvation that we all have and I felt the need to write to you so that I may exhort you to strive in faith which once was given to the saints and what's the faith that once was delivered to the saints it's the gospel of Jesus Christ the faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ is something that I have kept I didn't go astray I didn't take out or add anything I didn't overlook something but this faith which was uh, once uh, was given to the saints and as we read in the episode to the Philippians that we should fight together with one accord and to stand in one spirit for the faith of the gospel this faith and what's that faith this is the faith of the sound doctrine which includes all the mysteries of God from God the Father, the love of the God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Trinity of God, all the theology is one word. It's the faith which was once was given to the saints, not to the theologians. but to the holy men of God because the theologians they might uh, study it and learn it but they will not do it in the right way and the most uh, the, the disappointing thing is that they will give it to others the wrong way but the holy man um, is whose heart God opens to be attentive to the Word of God and the most important thing that he God opens his mind to understand the scriptures so that he may come to know with the understanding of the truth, the sound doctrine and the faith which once was given to the saints. I insist on that. And so the Apostle has this boldness. He says that in my life I have run and I have suffered and 
I have been watchful and I have fought with beasts in Ephesus with wild beasts but I didn't stop I continued to run in the path that God had appointed to me by doing the work that God had entrusted me and by being led at all times by the Holy Spirit and by preserving at all times the absolute truth of the gospel. Hallelujah. And for that reason, now I have no doubt. Now what is left for me is to receive the crown of righteousness which the Lord will give to me on that day since he is a righteous judge. And the judge is not someone who should... Um, this is a fight. Who is the one who crowns the victor? Is the judge because he testifies that he has fought lawfully. If he stole, if he changed his path, if he didn't walk exactly and lawfully, then the judge will not crown him. Isn't this a terrible thing? He might have finished first and better, but what matters is not whether you finished first and better. What matters if you have finished your path by uh, doing this lawfully? There's not an issue of being first um, in the Word of God, but what matters is to walk lawfully so that you may receive the crown of, of righteousness. And it says something that is amazing. And the righteous judge will not give that crown only to me, but also to all those that have loved the coming of the Lord and the appearance of the Lord those who have loved him it's very serious my dear brethren what is it that you love not what you like and what you're striving for what is it that you love because further down it says that Demas has forsaken me, has abandoned me by having loved this present world. Will he receive the crown of glory? There's no way. Why not? It's because he hasn't loved the coming and the appearance of the Lord. And here, my dear brethren, this is a criteria which is completely true whether you or I uh, will receive each one separately whether you will receive the crown of righteousness. What is it that you love? And you watch out because there are so many things that we could love that may keep us away from receiving the crown of righteousness. For example, I love my wife. Is this a bad thing? No, that's a good thing. I love my children. Is this a bad thing? No, that's a good thing. I love the work of God. Is this a bad thing? think no that's very good and so many more I could say that I love my work many many things but there is one thing that will uh, give you a reward and that is the crown of righteousness and that is to love the coming of our Lord the appearance of our Lord and for us is the rapture of the church. We should love it wholeheartedly. How can I love and and it says that they have already loved um, the appearance of the Lord which for us again I repeat it is the rapture of the church. How will I achieve that? that this may be confirmed within me and that God may know that not that I may speak it out and with my tongue but I should do that with a work and truth how can I love the rapture of the church above all things which is of course that I have to love my neighbor and my brother and my sister and the work of God and everything I have to love everything but what is this that will give me this confirmation 
of this special and unique love that will grant me the crown of righteousness? And the answer is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your will, with all your soul, with all your being, with all your mind, with all your thoughts, and with all your power and strength to love the Lord your God, then you will be able to say, may I read it again from within? It's much better that the time of my liberation may come so that I may be with the Christ whom I love and to comprehend that Dimas having loved the present world abandoned Paul having loved it means that he went toward that direction he wanted so much to experience the world and to live in it he thought that he misses the world Indeed, all the things that the world is offering, we, we miss them bad. We have accepted that because we know that all these things are vain. But to love the appearance of our Lord, it means that we love Christ and that we want to meet Him. We love Him wholeheartedly, with all of our strength and mind and heart. And how will I achieve that? That's what I asked God. I said, Lord, I want to love you like that. Because only if I love you like that, then the moment will come that you will come to receive me and I will see you face to face. And I was wondering about that and God told me, ask it and I will give to you. That's how easy it is. You should go to the Lord and tell Him, Lord, make me to love you more than anything. Fill my heart with your love, that I may love you with uh, all of my heart, with all of my soul, with all of my strength, and with all of my mind. I cannot do that. It's not of Him who wills or of Him who runs. Be merciful towards me, Lord and pour out your love, this unique love uh, by the Holy Spirit into my heart so that my heart may be in flames uh, for you, so that I may touch you, hear you um, and then my dear brethren everything will go away, they will go aside, they become small I do not depend from any man any longer I do not depend from my wife or my friend from the elder or from any pastor I do not depend on the work of God I do not depend on anything I become completely dependent um, within my heart with my Lord and this becomes a passion it's as if you will understand like the uh, heroin addict he cannot live without that but this is a passion that is dirty but he who has um, this love within him he cannot live without Christ he can do nothing he can say nothing he cannot think uh, himself without Christ not just for a second but he always looked by my side. Are you by my side? Do you hear me? Um, uh, lead me, guide me, uh, light my path, trust in me, hinder me. I love you. And then do you know what that man is? He is a friend of Christ. Abraham was called a friend of Christ who was such a man whose faith was considered righteousness. And when he lost his faith, then his hope led him to depend completely by one person, that is God. And when God told him, sacrifice your only begotten son whom you have loved, then he didn't hesitate to do that. But he said, he loves me, him whom I love. He doesn't want to take away my child, but what he wants is to be glorified in my life. 
For that reason, I will run to sacrifice him, and he will raise him up back. Amen. Hallelujah. Brethren, we should love nothing else. I plead with you, we should go to the Lord today and tell him, Lord, make me to love you, not just for one moment, but from now to the end, with all my heart, my soul, my mind, and my strength. And then God says that you who love me and you want so much to meet me and so much to um, to see me, this is accounted, uh, this is counted uh, as your righteousness and you will uh, confirm without the rapture of the church and the crown of righteousness. Amen.